Okay everyone, I decided to grab my night garden book today and do a picture. I thought, I fancied doing some autumnal covers again and thought that this one would work quite well. We've got the butterfly, which obviously we can do any colour, and the florals and leaves. So although there's no sort of, it doesn't, there's no acorns and sort of those sorts of things. There's all sorts of things we can still do with an autumnal palette. So I thought that would be fun. I've just grabbed my polycolour set of 12. These are Corinor. Um, I just wanted a really simple set of pencils to work with. You can see my brown's getting a bit short, but I'll manage. Um, I can show, I probably won't use these. It'll probably be all these ones at this end. But I just thought it would be fun to have a little go and show you my thoughts on how to make something autumnal with a limited colour palette. Um, we probably won't do the whole page, we'll probably do some elements, but we're going to start with the butterfly and uh, I will see how I get on. I am expecting a phone call, so I suspect the phone will ring, but I don't want to just not start recording just in case, so we'll see how we get on. Now I'm going to start with the very centre part of our butterfly and we have the body. Now I often do that in grey but I want this to have a more brownie look because we're going autumnal. So I'm going to start off with this little brown. I'm just going to tell you the colour because it's sharpened off. Um, it is the natural sienna. Um, luckily um, the pencils have the number right near the bottom so I've written a list for myself so I can tell you what they're called. I might just do those eyes in black, um, just yeah, but what I'm going to do is just start with a light layer of the brown, um, we're going to build up some layers of colour, so we're just going to start with this. Now I can see my lines here um, and that's fine because it's got we've got lines here and I feel it's furry, this bit's actually got a jaggedy edge as if it's supposed to be furry. So that is absolutely fine with me. Now this bottom bit has got some shape on it. We'll worry about that in a minute. So there's the brown. I'm going to grab the ivory black and um, add some shading. We'll do the eyes first. So we'll go around the outside of the eye and try and leave just a slightly lighter bit in the center. It's a little tricky, especially since I haven't sharpened my pencil. I'm doing the best I can. If you want a lighter white bit, you can always use a um, a white pen. But I'm quite happy with it just looking like that. Now I'm going to put a bit of dark on the edge. Basically, I want to make the brown darker without... Um, and I don't have a darker shade of brown, so I'm going to have to use my black. So I want it darker on the edges. I don't mind if it looks a little bit black. And then lighter towards the middle, so I'm just putting... A few layers of black on. We're going to build up the layers and we might come back and use more black if it's necessary. We'll just see how it goes. So I've just been shopping again. I'm a terror. I <laughs> I, um, I need something for my Christmas table. Um, it's When it's um, our new table, I'm going back to my brown and I'm just going to layer up over the top. My new table extends which is fantastic. When it's closed, it's exactly the same size as my previous table. So that's absolutely fine. I can use my old table protector and cloth. But when I extend my new table, my table protector isn't big enough. And my cloth doesn't fit. So I'm thinking, what do I do? So I've been looking at table mats. And they're all hideous. <laughs> really really dislike most of them the ones I like are not the right colour to match the kitchen I'm like oh and I'm just sick of looking I get really bored of shopping um, maybe not for for colouring books and pencils even though yeah I do I just get bored of shopping after a while I'm just not a shopping person so anyway I decided to uh, had a little brainwave this morning I thought, I've got a Christmas tablecloth, it's just a plain red cloth, very festive looking, won't match the kitchen. And I thought, maybe if that's big enough, I can just use that for Christmas and I'd just buy an extra bit of table protector. So I went downstairs and measured. And I have about mm, less than an inch each end. The cloth is only just big enough, but I figured that'll do. And uh, once plates, knives, forks and things are weighting it down, 
it won't matter. Now what I'm trying to do is make this look lighter in the middle. So I'm putting more layers on top of the black and bringing that in a little bit towards the centre. So it looks slightly rounded. And I'm just layering and layering and layering. I thought these pencils might go down quite well on this paper, but they're not looking too vibrant, to be honest. So I'm going to have to layer them quite a bit. But uh, I haven't tried them, I don't think, in this book. But I'm quite pleased with that. I think that's, that's I might need just a, whoops, <laughs> a tad more black down that side just to even it out. Looks a bit light there, but there we go. Okay, so now we have our main butterfly and I'm thinking, I've got a choice really for if I want my autumnal theme. So I've got these, basically these shades. I've got the other brown, but I'm not going to do that on the butterfly because I've already used it. So I could choose for my butterfly to be orange and yellow and my flowers to be red or the other way around. Now I think I'm going to do the butterfly with these colours because when I do the flowers, I want the leaves a bit brown and autumnal, so I might use that one again. So if I do red flowers, I can do red and yellow and orange and use that brown in the butterfly. I think it'll work. We do have a few butterflies around the outside of the picture that you can't see because I've zoomed in and they will be done in the same way, I think. I think that will work. Right, so let's grab these three. Let's start with the... It's called reddish brown. For me, it's a sort of sienna, really. Although the other brown's called natural sienna. I always think of a sienna as more orangey brown. But what do I know? I've only got thousands of pencils. I said that very quietly. It was an estimation. It's probably not true. I've probably only got about ten. <laughs> you can see how red this is. And I'm trying to do is just flick it out a little bit so it will blend in with the um, orange. So really I want it darker here and then less as we go out. These are acting, these are a bit odd on this paper. To say. I think now it will come together. Yeah, I've just been uh, thinking about Christmas really because although it's what's the date today it's the 15th yes yeah, so my christmas get together is on the 18th of december so i've got just over a month so it really isn't that long i've got to get christmas cards as well i've only bought a few so <laughs> i need to do that i bought more presents than i have cards but i don't know i tend to get the presents earlier than the cards it doesn't make any sense really but um anyway I have to decide where to buy the cards. I like to support local artists or local charities with my cards. So we'll see. Or local shops. So. And so far the cards I bought were all from a local shop. They're not a local company or charity, but we'll see how I get on. And uh, I've written my list out of who I need to buy gifts for. We don't buy for too many people, but I guess it's more than some. We um, are going to switch to my orange. This one, it is called uh, something-ish orange. <laughs> Reddish orange. I'm going to go right over the top of what I've done and just extend that colour out. You notice I'm ignoring the, uh, the pattern on the butterfly. That is, I'm just going to go to there for now. It's easier for me to take it in a smaller section. Yeah, I'm ignoring that for now. I will. Uh, I might do something with it. I might not. Um. Yeah. So I've got obviously my husband. He has just ordered something for his present. I've ordered mine. Very naughty. We'd look after ourselves first. The children. One of my sons has chosen what he wants. The other one has no idea. So waiting for them to decide. Or I've got them a few bits already and I'll get them a few more bits and pieces and surprises whoops just dragging my elbow on my pencils um pay bye for my parents and my sister and her husband and th their four children um then a few neighbors a few friends um 
my husband's father and his brother his, not his brother we don't do we have no present pact with his brother um we but we buy for his kids my niece and nephew and uh one of my husband's cousins buy for and then cards mm -hmm. that's a that's a, a different business altogether um oh let's do this bottom one before we switch um my mother is one of 12. My father is one of three. So I have a lot of cousins, a lot of uncles and aunts, and I don't centre all of them. <laughs> I'll be mad. And I have friends as well that I send cards to, so I have quite a lot. I do like doing cards. But I have to uh, settle myself down and be in the right mindset to be writing, um, which is fine. In fact, be a really good time to do it tomorrow when I've got um, workmen in but I haven't got my cards yet so I can't right I'm not sure whether to do this long piece in a different colour but I'm going to try it all in the yellow so I'm going to start my I'm going to go over the whole thing in yellow because I think it's going to make it get more vibrant which is what I want I'm looking for a vibrant colour I think that's working so I'm going to do the same on all of the butterflies, so I probably won't do them on camera. This is taking some time. So I'll probably do the plants on either side are almost um, symmetrical. So if I do each element for you, then um, you'll know where I'm at. So yeah, I wonder what... Um, I always find people's Christmas traditions really interesting. You know, we... Um, as a family with me, my sister, my parents, we have a tradition of having a get together on one day in the year and we take in turns in hosting that. Now, I haven't had a turn for quite a long time, but now I've got a new kitchen. It's like, right, it's my turn. <laughs> and um, we have to do it on a day when we're all available. It's quite tricky um, doing it on Christmas Day some years. It depends whether we're seeing our in-laws and things like that. So, um, so we're doing it on the 18th. My sister's got a shop and, um, it's open, um, you know, she's open up to Christmas so she can't, um, do weekdays and things like that. And, uh, so yeah, we're doing it on the 18th, which I think is the Sunday before Christmas. So, uh, it's, that's nice. And then we all have a meal, two meals. We have lunch, do crazies, have tea, um, just generally chit chat, sometimes games, depending on um, what mood people are in, and uh, things like that. So it should be good. And uh, yeah, so that's that get together um, tradition. My mum also has a family Christmas party for any members of her family that wish to come. So that includes her brothers and sisters, my cousins, you know, her nieces and nephews, people, anyone like that. And her cousins too. So uh, that's a big gathering. And that always happens just after Christmas. Um, 27, 28, something like that. Depending on the day of the week and things like that. What everyone's doing. So we have that party too. And then everybody brings some food to contribute. So my mum used to pay for it all. And it just got a little bit expensive. And there was always a lot of leftovers which she had to give away. So what she decided and to do was to, and some people wanted to contribute, some people gave her money towards it and things like that. So she decided that it would be better to just ask people to bring something. And then what that means is that you bring something that you like and then there's some food that you like and um, obviously enough to share. So it works out well. And everyone eats too much, but uh, you know, that is for party after all. Now there is our, it's quite, um, it's, it's quite bright this butterfly isn't it? Here the, the, um, the blending isn't very neat so I'm going to just grab my orange again. Just go over that. What we can do is if you just go over the top of it you can just sort of blend it in a bit better. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to take the orange out a bit further on this side as well because it needs to sort of match. But there we are. So that's 
So there is our butterfly. Now, what I thought I might do was on all the patterns on the wing was to use a metallic pen. I'm going to show you, I'm not going to do it because um, I'll smudge it. Was to use a metallic pen in one of these colours to do all these details I thought would be fun and it would shimmer. I'll probably use, um, I might use this one, I don't know if it's very pink actually. I'll have to try them out, I don't have any um, scrap paper in here. I'll have to try them out and decide which one to use and I would advise you do the same thing. I'm just going to colour these bits and I'm going to do them in the black, just a light layer of black and then over the top with the brown that we use for the body, which is the natural sienna. There we go. Now, so yes, I'm going to go over those with, I will go around the outside and over all the details with the um, shiny pen. You don't have to do that. You could, you could try using white. I don't think it's going to look so autumnal if you do. So uh, I think it's just a bit of fun. Another option you could do is to get a brown fine liner, go over them and maybe even do some doodles in, in the bits. I don't know, if you're arty, not arty. Right, so I want to do this flower. I think it looks lovely. Now the centre of the flower, I don't want to do just yellow, but I want to do some yellow in it. So I'm going to use this natural sienna first to do a little bit of brown down at the bottom. I'm actually going to do it all the way around, I think. We'll make it look like it's um, like three dimensional, hopefully. But for this one, I'm just going to show you. I'm only going to put it in the bottom. And then I'm going to grab the yellow. This is the chrome yellow, by the way. I didn't tell you the name. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't even got a pencil sharp. Now I have. <sighs> Very disorganised this morning. I've been trying to find a bit of. Um, we need a bit of extra splashback off cuts to do a little bit of finishing work in the kitchen. And um, I've been trying to track some down. It's not been easy. I haven't, f I haven't found any yet. Okay, so there's the centre. It does look quite brown, actually. I was hoping it'd look a bit more yellowy, but it doesn't matter. Here's the red. This is the pyrrole red. I've never heard of that word. Now, what I think I'm going to do with this one is make it darker here, so I'm going to really layer it up and then lighten it towards the centre of the petal. Like that. And then make it darker again on the end. So it, we all have a lighter bit in the middle. It's just a different way of doing it and I think it's quite fun. I've shown you this before. Like that. Now this red is quite pinkish, so I might go over it with my orange to uh, make it look a bit less pink. But I'm just going to do all of the petals in the same way. Now these smaller flowers that are on the side, I'm also going to do these red. But I think I might just do the centres yellow, just plain yellow. Join that up a bit. So it's, try and make it so that you can see it's definitely darker in the centre. It just makes it look a little bit different. Hopefully it makes it look like these are turned down a little bit. But it, often you can't see that effect until the um, whole circle of petals is done which is why I'm persevering with this rather than um, moving on to something else. So I'm going to, we're going to use some greens. We've got two greens here, but one of them is much more autumnal, I feel, than the other. But we may need to use both to get a sort of darker colour if we want it. So I'll have a look at those in a minute once we start doing leaves. This is quite a fun and relaxing technique for the florals. Oh, I feel like I need a coffee. I've not long had one, but uh, anyway, 
I shall get one soon. Or maybe a cup of tea. I haven't got much of my favourite tea left, so I haven't been having a lot of tea. But uh, yeah, it's nice. I can't, I love a cup of normal decaf tea with cow's milk. It's so nice. But I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't have it. So tea isn't so enjoyable as it was, but I do enjoy a decaf green tea with no milk. Um, and oat milk is quite nice in decaf normal tea as well, so sometimes I have that. But I usually drink soy milk, which is, I think, revolting in tea, but works in coffee. And it's better for me than oat because of the protein level. I hope now you can see that it looks like it's dipped in here and the petals have turned out slightly. I think it um, it's come together. I'm, I think I'm not going to put any orange on there because I think um, it might look too close to the colour of this. I think it works. I'll decide at the end, but I'm pretty sure it works. Now for these, I'm going to go around there with a darker layer and then fade towards the petal tip. Just because they're smaller, I can't fit in the a dark well I could if I really persevered but I'm a lazy colorist I just want to make it easy there we go and then the chrome yellow for the middle there and I'm going to do all of those the same these circles I'm going to do in this yellow as well all of them I don't know if you can see them all in shot yeah you can see all these side ones I do the same on the other side, actually, um, and there's some at the top. I'm going to do them all in yellow. And I think the yellow is bright enough to stand out against the red, uh, against the white paper. Okay, we have these stems and leaves to do. I'm going to do that next, and then we'll do these um, little flowers after. So this is the green I think will be the best one to use. It is called, I think, um, number 24. I'm just grabbing my sharpener. I tidied it away. A meadow green. Yeah, my son sat in here um, yesterday because um, his brother was streaming and he was trying to work, so he sat in here. I don't know how successful he was. I think he's getting on. So I'm going to do a layer here. I did it darker there and a bit lighter there. Here I'm just going to fade it as I go, like that, and do these fade towards the tip, because I'm going to make the tips brown, like they're autumnal. Now here we've got a bit of um, um, shadow drawn in for us, so we can just go over that a bit more. So here, look, the shadow's drawn in, so we can layer over the pencil, and then fade it down. Here and around here. Now what I'm aware of is this stem is for this, which you can't see, sorry. Whereas this stem is for these bits and the leaves are again a separate bit. But I think it sort of makes sense to do them all the same colour because they seem to all be coming out from the same place. And this, I mean, obviously it's very different to this flower, but, you know, I think it's okay. And I think it will help to tie it all together. Now, I don't want this, um, although I want the leaves to have a bit of brown, I don't want this bit. So what I'm actually going to do is put a little bit of shading on there where these are overlapping. I think they might be a bit darker on one side to the other, like that. darker. Now I could make these tips a bit brown so I shall fade down to those like that. Now I'm just going to demo on this little bit. I think this little brown, this um, natural sienna is going to be the best one. I'm not going to do it too hard. I'm just going to put a little bit there and then just stretch it into the green blend it in 
like that. The same with the leaves. Can you see the leaves? Yes. I'm sort of ignoring the stem and stuff and just getting my colour down. Like that. So all the leaves will be done in the same way. And then we have this. Now this is quite an interesting little plant. I'm going to go over it all in the orange. It's called... Oh, it's reddish orange. I've already told you, haven't I? Sorry. So we'll go over it all in a light layer. Like that. And then we've got these circular shapes on it. So I'm going to try and emphasise those by going around the edge of each circle with a slightly darker bit. Let's see what happens. My pencil might have benefited from being slightly sharper, but you know. What I'm going to do as well is grab the, um, I'm just going to sharpen it, the um, reddish brown. There it is, number 30, reddish brown. And do a little, the bits in between those big circles in a bit of a darker pencil. And then they'll sort of stand out a bit more. So any bit in the background that isn't a circle, just go over with this just to darken it a bit. It should help those other bits to stand out a little bit more. Like that, that's all. Um, I'm just looking and I think that is all the elements from the page. Now... I'm not sure, I could do a bit of a pastel background, but I'm not sure it'll work because I thought I could do yellow, but I've got all this yellow going on already. So I probably won't do a background actually, I'll probably just colour in everything in exactly the same way as I've shown you. And uh, I will pop a picture at the end for you to see, so you can see what it looks like when it's done. And I've slightly extended the time that I keep those pictures up for so that you've got a bit more chance to uh, have a look at it. Or, But you can press pause. Um, but if you do miss any or want me to um, share any pictures with you, um, you can ask me in the comments. I can pop it onto my Facebook page and you can pop over there and have a little look um, if you want to. But anyway, I am going to go and finish off this picture. Um, see if I've got any replies to my emails and things as well um, any luck in finding my bit of work top that I need but for now thank you very much for watching um, I hope that you have a lovely day and happy colouring <laughs>